Hello everybody, it's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter, and welcome to my weekly episode. This is episode number 149, and I'm entitling it Upcoming Projects and New Fabric. So there's a little bit of everything in this podcast today. Um, And it is January the 11th, 2022. So we're moving into January quite quickly, it seems. Okay, so what have I been working on? Well, I showed you this last week and uh, I haven't gotten, well, I've gotten a little bit further on it. Um, It's the Little Town Pattern by Chelsea Stratton um, from A Quilting Life. Um, And it's a Christmas quilt, as you know. And, uh, excuse me, frog in my throat. And so I have gotten a few of the houses done. I am basically have broken this pattern up into three component parts. Um, There's houses, there's stars, and there's trees. So I'm concentrating on the houses right now. And actually, as of yesterday, and let me show you the picture, I have all the houses done. There are 10 houses that are hanging up here. And I have two tree and star units together. So I need eight more stars and I need eight more trees. Actually, I need only seven more stars because I made a star yesterday. So my process in doing this to keep everything straight is I'm basically doing it uh, one block at a time, one from each of the three groupings, um, as I said. But what I've done is I've taken a whole bunch of little blue baskets. You can actually see the blue baskets I'm talking about down here at the bottom of the picture. And uh, I had uh, 10 of those baskets and I cut the fabric that I wanted and needed for each house, labeled them with sticky notes. I couldn't live without my sticky notes when it comes to quilting. I'm telling you, I use them for everything. And clipped them all together and had one basket per house with all the pieces. And then I could just take them out and I have little mini design boards that I've created uh, using um, basically a blank canvas covered in um, flannel or batting. Um, and, uh, I just lay the pieces all out on that and make one of the units. And that's the way I'm doing it with the stars. I now have a basket with all the star components in it, and I'll do the same with the tree. I find that this method, uh, gets me through the project a little bit, uh, faster, um, because it's, I'm being a little bit more efficient with my time. And the other thing is too, to be quite honest, making these little houses, I found a little bit tedious. There's a lot of little pieces in each one of the houses. Um, And I think too, in the design of these houses, they didn't necessarily have to have that many little pieces in them. And what I mean is, and you can't see it in the picture very well, but up here where the roof line is, if you notice very carefully, I'll see if I can blow this up a little bit more for you. Oops. Okay, right in here in the peaks, there are some tiny one inch squares of fabric that you put in the corner of these one and a half by two and a half inch pieces. And you do this uh, stitch and flip method to get those little points in there. Um, I don't know if they add a whole lot to the house design or not. Now, part of the problem might be my color choice as well. I wanted this to be very bright and bold. And so I'm using, um, fabrics that are like that. If maybe I had used something that was a little bit more of a solid uh, remodeled up here in this strip, then these little pieces would show up better. And you can see the same thing here. You notice how these, basically when your eye falls on them, they just sort of blend in. This one, it stands out a little bit more. So yes, that's more me than the designer of the quilt. Um, But it is a little bit tedious putting all those pieces uh, together. But anyways, this is how I'm getting through it. I'm not disliking this, but I don't enjoy working with tiny little pieces. I really don't. But it's coming along nicely. Now, the other problem I'm finding is the finished measurements of each of these pieces are not coming out uh, the same size as in the pattern. And I don't know why. In fact, there's one piece that goes on here that is a little bit longer. Um, The piece that I put this little stripe that's in here, uh, this piece. This one is about of a quarter inch out. It's longer than the rest of the other units. And I don't know why. I've I've cut it to the measurements that it calls for. Um, my quarter inch seam allowance is accurate because I checked that too. 
it's not a big problem I just trim it and all the houses are the same size when I do that um so that's I guess the only thing that's the, the thing that's most important right when I piece this together but I find that very annoying and I don't know if it's because it is something else I'm doing that I haven't discovered yet or whether the measurements the mathematics are out a little bit now I have to admit I have not taken the time to figure that out uh, to do the math because quite frankly doing quilt math gives me a headache but it's a minor thing but this goes back to what uh, Walter and I were saying on the last episode of So Chatty um, pattern writing you know you you it, it's it's complex not all patterns are the same I'm not saying this is a badly written pattern although one thing if my criticism of this pattern is there's too much information in each section it's all runs together in in a several sentences I think in my way of thinking I would have divided those what's stated in each one of those little paragraphs I would have laid it out more as a ABC or a bullet it sort of list now that's probably just me that's the way I like to, to look at things that's the way I would have designed it of course maybe for restraints on um, you know how many pages the final pattern would come out to be maybe uh, the designer had to do it that way I don't know but I find when everything is run together in a whole series of sentences one right after the other for you know a bunch of instructions or details that I miss things and that's what I thought I had done here. I had missed something when I was looking at the cutting directions or whatever. So I went back and very carefully read it and used my highlighter as well. Don't be afraid to mark up on your patterns if uh, if it helps you. We said that as well when we talked about patterns uh, in So Chatty last week. Um, but no, I think I have done everything right. But don't hold me to that. I am an idiot quilter after all. So I could have made an idiot mistake. But if I have, it's very minor. It's not going to affect the final product. So that's as far as I've got. And uh, maybe I'll have something a little bit more substantial to show you next week. We'll see. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. What else have I got to show you? Well, um, I don't have any other projects that I've been working on this week. Although um, I am going to talk about a couple of things that are future projects in a moment. But I just wanted to bring up uh about craft and chat we had a good one um and if you weren't there you missed out some of you were there and we still have a very small group that joins uh me the first wednesday of every month for craft and chat starts at 1 p.m eastern standard time and runs until about 4 p.m eastern standard time you've heard me say that many times i'm sure and i know many of you have jobs <laughs> you poor suckers but i suppose you like to eat right so um you know really the people that I have that are able to to come uh, on that date are you are mostly people that are retired um, I think a couple of them may still be working but working from home and they're able to work it into their uh, schedule so yeah I get that you know life happens and all that kind of stuff but if you have thought about it before and you've made many excuses for yourself why you can't do it stop that <laughs> we don't bite it is a really nice group of people and it has been growing slowly uh you know by one or two people each time um <clears throat> i think at the height of it on wednesday we had about 14 people um 12 or 14 i don't know still not a huge group but it's a great group it's a friendly group and you are more than welcome to be part of that group so you know and as i've said before you can come you don't have to be right there at one o'clock and you don't have to stay to the bitter end either you know if you've got something else scheduled that day and you can only spare an hour or two hours or something out of it that's just fine okay it is meant to bring a little joy into your life it's meant to alleviate some of the stress we're all feeling and we've been feeling for quite a long time with this pandemic thing it's just for you okay so yeah think about it but anyways I always learn something um from the other people in the group and I have to admit I was screwing up on I was working on these those little houses and I was screwing up on them because I was trying to pay attention to what people were saying and that kind of thing and letting people into the uh link as well uh as 
since I am the monitor of it, you know, has some responsibilities there. And uh, so I was screwing up. So I was doing some unseeming as well. Um, usually I get a lot done. Uh, but because of the nature of this particular pattern and that, it took a little bit more concentration. But anyways, it's fun. I hope you can join us. So that takes me to, uh, I just wanted to share this picture with you as well. Because um, after Christmas, let me switch over here. After Christmas, um, I took down all my Christmas decorations. Well, I had a Christmas quilt on that couch that you're seeing the picture of right now in my uh, family room. And uh, when I took off the Christmas quilt, it just looked a little bare. So I thought, you know, I shouldn't just keep all my quilts in the guest bedroom. I should, you know, put them out on display somehow. So this is one that I did. This was one I didn't do. I did uh, just before Christmas. It's a scrappy quilt. It was made up of actually of orphan blocks and bits and pieces. And uh, I thought it turned out really nice. And I had shown it to you back before Christmas as well. It's very colorful. And so I folded it in sort of a, a triangular shape because I think it fits across the couch a little better. And I don't like taking a quilt and putting it out to its full length so it looks more like a, what do you call it, a, a seat cover, a chair cover, that kind of thing. Um, so I folded it up this way. It adds a little bit of color, more color to the room, I think. Uh, it looks kind of nice, uh, centered between those two cushions on that love seat. And this is a, a, a love seat in our living room. There's only two of us in our family room, that is. There is a three-seater couch where you can't see a running L uh, in an L shape next to this one. And that's where we sit. Um, this one hardly ever gets seated upon unless there's people over here and we're happen to be sitting up in that room <laughs> people over that was an old time concept wasn't it how like two three years ago um but anyways so what i think i'm going to do is each month i think i'm going to swap out that quilt with another one from my collection and let them see a little bit of the daylight kind of a thing and actually i've got another couch in my more formal living room um that uh, would be a good place for a, a quilt as well. So, hmm, just thought about that now. So, yeah, I've got to do that. I need to go through all my quilts. And uh, they're all stacked up in the guest bedroom right now. And I need to organize them into, you know, potential gifts, uh, potential charity, and figure out a way to sort of display them on the guest bedroom bed since we're not having any guests coming over anymore, really, uh, for that bed, uh, so that it can be seen a little bit better. I don't know. I have to, to, to see about that. So, you know, maybe you can give me suggestions of how you display any of your quilts in your house. I'm out of wall space, so I can't put them there. So anyways, you know, I've got a few on the wall behind me over here, and you've seen those before, um, but I just don't have any more wall space to hang quilts so yeah okay so let us move on to what i want to show you next um yeah i've i'm going to switch my camera again to show you um this next thing just give me a moment here i'm i feel so disorganized i have a new little toy and if you saw my vlog yesterday where i can push buttons to switch everything around Except right now I can't push the buttons to switch it to what I want right here. Well, I can. Okay, here we go. Okay. This is a pattern I saw. Now, North Cot has come out with, well, they've been doing this old Canada fabric for, I guess, 10 years now. And so for the 10th anniversary of it, they've come out with a new variation on the old Canada line. And I saw this panel which is in the center of this quilt right here and I fell in love with it I thought that was beautiful absolutely beautiful so I went and I explored the rest of the fabric and I bought uh, several meters of each of the fabrics in the line and I can show you what the fabrics look like so here they all are they do have uh, other panels as well but here's the whole line now I bought this panel as well and I bought some of these and some of these and I bought this one 
and some of the backgrounds as well. And my whole goal here is to, um, oh, I didn't see the placemats. Hmm. What's the pattern? Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. Um, anyways, yeah, okay, stop shopping, stop, uh, get on with the talking. So um, I bought the fabrics that I need for this pattern, and I bought the pattern as well. The, the thing with Northcott is you can't buy directly from them. They ship their, their supplies or their fabric and everything associated with out to various dealers who deal with it. So I bought my fabric from Ultimate Sewing, of course, and I also bought some more of it from Lindley General Store. Um, and I found this pattern on a site called Dragonfly. And uh, that's actually what I'm sitting on right now is Dragonfly Quilting and Gifts. They're out in BC, I believe. And so I've ordered the pattern, but they have yet to send it to me. The pattern was $13.95 Canadian, as you can see right there. And I made sure by looking at the picture that I have enough fabrics for this quilt. So I think it'll be really nice once I get the pattern for it. And uh, the rest of the fabric is arriving today as well. Not sure when the fabric's going to get here. They're not the quickest in shipping things. And I think it's coming by Canada Post, which slows it down even more. But I'm not ready to start working on this particular pattern yet now. So it doesn't matter. So the... Um, other thing I want to show you here, just let me go to my pictures, is this. This is 3D printed, it, and I made this uh, to use up empty reels. That's what you see, this black part is an empty filament reel. And they are recyclable to a point. Some are, some aren't. And it depends on the recycling policies in your neighborhood, whether or not they will take them. But I thought, you know, it seems like a bit of a waste. What can I do with them? Well, I know a lot of people create these little drawers, and that's what I found on Thingiverse. Print them out in a 3D printer, and there's and you screw them right into this little real thing, and they open up like little storage drawers, just like I'm showing you here. And I was playing around with the dimensions to get them to fit because the model that I downloaded uh, was a little too big for this filament reel so I had to reduce it and that was a little bit of a hit and a miss kind of thing um, until I got it right. So I had extras that I had made in the little other sizes. So I decided I'd make this little cup here which is actually a flower pot and uh, I glued these together and on top of the reel and so you know you have little drawers and you have a little caddy. And it holds all the stuff. And this sits over by my sewing machine. And it works really well. And I liked it so much that I made a couple of other ones that are holding um, supplies for my 3D printer too. So, you know, you can upscale junk. And that's what I was doing here. Okay. So, oh, one more thing. I forgot to show you this. Yeah. Uh, this is a, another 3D print. Isn't he cute? This is an Angry Bird uh, pin cushion. Now, um, don't look too closely at the glue that's running over and the strings. Of, those aren't part of the make. I forgot to clean those off when I took the picture. I have cleaned them off since and shined it up a little bit. And it looks really good. Um, and it's cute. Little pin cushion. But uh, what made me create this was that these originally, whoever designed these models for the Angry Bird, designed them as an egg cup holder. And actually I made two of them in marble filament because um, we eat a lot of soft boiled eggs, usually on the weekend. And we do have some egg cups, but we've broken a couple of them. We're using a shot class actually to replace one of them. And uh, so I thought, well, this might suit the purpose. So it does. I talked about that yesterday and showed those yesterday on the vlog. So if you're interested, you can check it out there. But I thought, hey, this would make a neat pin cushion. So I blew them up a little bit bigger. And yeah, I have way too many pin cushions from this. I'm kind of obsessed, as you well know. Okay, so that's a bunch of the things that I've been working on. So that takes me to this week's uh, 
demo review or thoughts section, as I call it. And I thought I'd talk a little bit about my sewing chairs and sewing stools, what I sit on when I'm sewing. Because, um, you know, it's I've seen a lot of videos talking about the ergonomics uh, and healthy sewing positions and things like that. And they all come back to talking about your sewing chair. And so I thought I'd talk about what's working for me. So I'm going to insert that video right in here. This week I thought I'd talk a little bit about what I'm sitting on when I'm sewing. And I have two different types of what I call my sewing chairs or sewing stools. Now the first one over to the side here that doesn't have a back on it, it is basically listed on Amazon as either a tattoo parlor stool or um, a hairdresser stool, something like that. It is adjustable. It'll go up or down so you can adjust the height and it is on wheels. It doesn't take up a lot of space and you can swivel on it. And this is what I bought when I first got into sewing and I had my old sewing room, or as I used to call it, my sewing dungeon. And I didn't have a lot of space between my my two sewing machines. Here I have a little bit more space, but nevertheless, instead of having to move this other one, which I'll talk about in a minute, I just leave this one and it fits right here underneath my uh, second sewing machine uh, table. And I really like this stool. It's very portable. I have taken it with me on retreats. But one thing I didn't like about this stool was I found it didn't give me any back support. And after you've been sitting for quite a long time at your sewing machine, and of course we all know you should get up and uh, move every you know half an hour to 45 minutes. Of course, who does that? We get so involved in our sewing that we never get up. Um, and so I did get a sore lower back uh, on this one if I didn't get up and move about and stretch a little. So when I moved my sewing room into my what used to be my craft room, I decided to buy this uh, little chair. The same idea as the stool, except this one has a back to it and it is fully adjustable and it swivels. Now the reason why I bought this instead of maybe a fancier sewing chair is because of my space. So if you look right here, this is where my sewing machine is and this is where my pressing area is. And if I move this chair over into this area, well, you can see that if I had anything much bigger, I wouldn't be able to get it in here. Um, so I took a chance and ordered this one on Amazon and I'm not sure what either one of these costs. They weren't a lot of money. This, I think the stool was in around $60 or $69, something like that at the time. It might've been a little cheaper than that. And I'm talking in Canadian dollars, of course. And this one I think was comparable. I don't think it was much more than the stool. And this one is very, very comfortable and I love the back on it. It uh, does give me support. And again, if I want to go to a retreat and I want to take my own chair, I think I can get this in the car without too much problem. It takes up a little bit more space than the stool, but nevertheless, I think I could get it in. So yeah, I think it's important to have a really good chair because you're going to be sitting in it for quite a few hours when you're sewing. So you want something that gives your back support and is comfortable as well. But if you have a tiny space like I do, then you're going to want something that fits in there. Now, yes, it would be really nice to have a big, comfy, padded chair with a lumbar support and all that kind of thing, but I just can't get one in in this space. And this is doing fine for what I need it for. So, um, on So Chatty last week, we talked about patterns and what you should do when you get a pattern and problems that we've had with various patterns, things like that. And one of the things we brought up was short forms and how patterns are filled, whether, you, uh, whether you're sewing a garment or a quilt, they're filled with short forms. Now, a good pattern will explain right on the onset of it that what those short forms mean, but some do not. So we went through a few of those and talked about it. Well, one of my viewers, sent me a comment, uh, Persita Graham. Uh, and uh, she was, as just for fun, she found a bunch of other terms as well, short forms that are appropriate to quilters. And I thought I'd read these off to you. There's one called BDNQ. That stands for 
bad day, not quilting. Uh, fart, F-A-R-T. Fabric accumulation road trip. Fob, F-O-B. Fear of binding. Hips, H-I-P-S. Hundreds of ideas piling skyward. H-S-Y. Haven't started yet. Pigs, P-I-G-S. Projects in grocery sacks. Uh, Sable, S-A-B-L-E. Stash accumulation beyond life expectancy. I like that one. Squid, S-Q-U-I-D. Sewing a quilt until I die. And some quilts do feel like that, don't they? TGIF. Thank God it's finished. Now that's a good one. Um, wombat. W-O-M-B-A-T. Waste of money, batting, and time. And W-I-W-M-I. -I, wish it would make itself. So thanks, uh, Perseta, Perseta, for sending those off because those are good for a laugh, really. You know, it would be kind of fun to write a, a short little pattern and use, no, use nothing but all short forms and not say, make it like a mystery quilt, you know, put in as many short forms as you possibly can and not tell the person what the short forms mean and see what they can come up with in the creation. Kind of a different kind of challenge. It would definitely be a mystery quilt, that's for sure. You might have to make up some of the things uh, if you didn't know what the term or the abbreviation meant. Okay, so moving on, that takes me to the subscribers quilt of the week. And it's from a regular viewer here, uh, Johanna Vadeka. And uh, take a look at this her week's subscriber creation. quilt is not a quilt, but it is a set of Christmas stockings. And yes, we are past Christmas now, but uh, Johanna, uh, Johanna, let me say her name correctly, Johanna Vadeka. She sent this to me uh, before Christmas, but in the order of things that I want to present, I was not able to present this at Christmas time. But nevertheless, this is some ideas for future projects for you um, for the next Christmas. So, Johanna writes, These are for recently adopted sons of my daughter and son-in-law. Stockings are made from minky fabric with fleece for the cuff. I embroidered the names on the fabric before cutting it out. I should have followed my original plan and made one complete stocking before embroidering and cutting out the others. Turned out I embroidered the names upside down. Oops. Luckily, I had enough fabric to remake the cuffs. The minky was messy to work with. The mess in my second picture was from cutting one stocking. Let's take a look at that second picture. Oh yeah, that's very messy. Uh, even after vacuuming, I'm still finding red fiber around my sew sewing room. I'll have to thoroughly clean my sewing machine after this project. Yeah, I've heard that Minky is very, very messy to work with. I have never used it. But let's take a look at your stockings again, because even though the Minky is um, somewhat messy to work with, it does give a nice final product, a very plush, a very soft look. And I love the names, uh, the way you embroidered them on the top cuff. And although you kept to the traditional color of red for Christmas, um, the white just offsets your embroidery so nicely. And you've got a little hanging loop in there as well. So a really probably simple and quick project, uh, but a very effective end product. And I am sure those young guys really love getting these from their newly adopted grandmother. Thanks, uh, Johanna, for sending those to me. And that takes me to the YouTube channel of the week. And this one is called The Sewing Studio, and it's out of the United Kingdom. And this week's YouTube channel review. of the week is called The Sewing Studio. And this YouTube channel comes out of the UK. It is actually a store or a shop that sells sewing machines and quilting fabrics and things like that. So many of their videos on here are advertising some of the products that they keep in stock. However, there are a lot of very useful videos on here as well. And if we just pull down the screen, you can see there's a little blurb about them. And they have uh, something called mini candies on point quilt, whatever that is, cushion cover design, beginner's guide to quilting, which is good. Now it's a trailer. So I think they offer classes online as well or possibly in store. 
uh, how to make a simple hourglass quilt. Um, you can see their videos are relatively short, so they're quick and easy access, uh, though you may have to supplement some of the things that they talk about uh, with other YouTube channels. So uh, here's a more extensive list of what they have. Uh, they talk about fabric lines. Uh, they talk about making bags. Um, Things like that. Now, as I said, this is primarily to sell products on their website or at their store in the UK. But there are some very interesting uh, instructional videos as well. So if we go to the playlist, for example, what you'll see here is they have a series about using mini charms, um, sewing machine overviews, block of the month, fabrics, quilting inspiration. Um, how-to guides. So there's a lot of interesting things on here that will maybe inspire you or give you some quick videos on how to use certain techniques or how to create certain um, patterns. So that's the sewing studio out of the UK. Now this is the part of the episode where I talk usually about a pattern that's hanging on my vision board that's for a future project. Um, this one isn't actually hanging on my vision board. Um, I've gone off to look at some magazines that I bought when I first started quilting and I marked some pages of potential quilts I wanted to make and then I filed the catalog or the magazine away and I never looked at it again. So I thought I'd dig some of these out and take a, uh, a, a look again at those things. And this is one of them. It's called Summer's End. It's by McCall's Quilting Magazine. And uh, well, here are this the week's details. pattern from my vision board comes from this magazine that I've had for quite a while called McCall's Quilting, the best of American quilting. And this is the September, October 2018 edition. So I'm not sure if you can get your hands on this one uh, now. You might be able to if you go to their website and look at back issues. But uh, I used to buy a lot of quilting magazines, but I found that usually in any one given magazine there'd only be maybe one or two patterns that i vaguely was interested in so instead of spending the money on these kinds of magazines um well i might still buy them but i look at them and if i can get three or more quilts that i think i might make then i may purchase the magazine now in this particular one however i did find several and over the next couple of weeks, I'll be featuring those patterns from this magazine. But here's the first one that caught my eye called Summer's End. And of course, it has stylized maple leaves in various fall-like colors. Although there are some greens and teals and things in here that I think make this a little bit more interesting. Um, I do like anything with a maple leaf uh, sort of motif in it. And that's why this one attracted my eye. Now it says the finished size is 51 by 66, so it's not a huge quilt. Um, and finished blocks, they have six blocks that are 15 by 15, and six that are 10 by 10, and 21 at 5 by 5, and four at 7.5 by 7.5. So I think this would probably go together relatively quickly. Although some of these blocks like are a little bit smaller, but I think once you got the hang of it, because probably each block uh, goes together in the same way, even though they're a different size. Um, you could make this out of any colors that you want. It looks like they've used batiks in this particular one that they've showing here as their sample. Um, and I think it would look really great in batiks. But then again, you know, I have an affinity to batik fabric. So this is designed by Wendy Shepard. Um, I'm not familiar with this individual, but that's okay. So again, this comes called Summer's End, and it comes from the magazine, the uh, September-October edition of McCall's Quilting. And so this week on the Idiot uh, or the Idiot Quilter Presents, which is another amusing one, um, I rant a little bit about uh, well. How much money do I actually spend on quilting supplies? And do I have a problem with that? And I know I'm not alone in thinking that. Uh, I think all of us, if we stand back, we take a look at what we have spent uh, over a certain amount of time on quilting fabrics, quilting tools, things like that, and wonder, 
Hmm. Do we have a problem? So that's this week's uh, rant. And the link to that is in the show notes below. So that takes me to the quilt that I want to critique this week. And I called this one why? One of my quilts that I'm going to critique this week is one that I made very early in my quilting career. And it used to be one that was on our bed, but I have replaced it with what I made later called Labyrinth that I liked a little better in terms of color scheme. But this one I call Wild, and I think it's pretty obvious why I call it that, because of the fabrics that I picked. Now, something that makes this quilt very unique and very personalized is the fabrics that I chose, because these fabrics, all of them, with the exception of this border on the outside, are my own creation. Yes, I designed these fabrics. Let's take a little closer look at these. Now, you might wonder how I managed to create this much fabric. Well, there is a site, and I've reviewed this before on the Idiot Quilter called Spoonflower. And I think most people are familiar with Spoonflower. And with Spoonflower, you can submit your own pictures, your own designs, whatever you want, and have it printed on fabric. And they have various fabrics you can print it on, and you can also make it into uh, wallpaper or wrapping paper as well. But I chose to make it as fabric. Now, where these designs came from were out of my art journaling because you may or may not know that before I got into quilting for for many 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 years I was a paper crafter and one of the things I was doing was art journaling and paint pouring and this actually comes from some of my uh, paint pouring and out of my art journal pages which I just scanned at high resolution into my computer and then I sent them off to Spoonflower and had them made into several meters of fabric. And from there, I designed the quilt. So all of these fabrics you're seeing here all came from my paint pouring uh, projects or from my art journal pages. And uh, it's a really cool, at least I think it's a really cool quilt. Now, to be critical of this, well, first of all, how did I quilt it? Well... As I said, this was very early in my quilting career when I designed this. So you can see I just used simple walking foot quilting on this. And I just did wavy lines uh, up and down the quilt. Which I think worked okay with this because already this quilt is very, very busy. Um, but I think the very unique thing about this quilt is the fact that this is completely my own design. And the fabric is my own design as well. And I'm very happy with it. And I am sure if I looked at it much more closely, I will find some areas that I could have improved in or on. Um, because as I said, it was early in my career. So there probably are some oopses in here. But right now, I can't find them. And if I can't find them, then I'm certainly not going to point them out to you. So the online fabric store this week that I wish to review is one I have never been to the store. I have never bought anything from them, but it's called Water Girl Quilt Company. So here's my this review. This week's online that. quilt store is called Water Girl Quilt Co. And this is located in Prescott, Ontario, which is not all that far away from me. Um, I've never been here, though, however. So I am making my judgments, as I usually do, based on what I see on their website. So we're on their homepage right now, and they have a scrolling gallery, which many, many um, online quilt stores do have. Actually, I find them a little annoying when they're on there because they keep going by. They go by so fast. If I want to click on something that I see, um, I got to be quick about it. But anyways, that's just me. So right off the bat, they have a welcome message here and they say free shipping within Canada with $150 purchase before taxes. Uh, please call us to pay by electronic transfer, however. So this would suggest to me that their method of payment is not done by a credit card or by PayPal. It's strictly by uh, e-transfer from your bank to theirs. This I have not seen on a website before. Um, that doesn't bother me because usually those transactions are very, very secure. So I would be fine with that. Although in this day and age uh, where I'm using my credit card for everything because I get points, um, 
I'm not so sure if I would go for this, but it's that seems to be the option. We'll see maybe later on when we get into looking at shipping in that, and maybe we'll put in a test into uh, the cart and see if this is the only way that you can pay. Now, this would also suggest to me that they do not have a brick and mortar store. So we'll have to look into that. But let's get back to this first page. They have pre-order items, new arrivals, and our classes. Okay, when I see pre-order items, this would also suggest to me that this is a store that doesn't keep a great uh, level of inventory, a great quantity of inventory. Um, so what do they have for pre-order? Please note that if your order pre-order items with in-stock items, the in-stock items will be held at the store until the rest of your order arrives. Should you need those in-stock items now, please order on a separate purchase. Thank you. I'm a little confused what that means. I really am. And these are all pre-order. But these are not new products that I'm looking at here. I don't think so again this suggests to me that uh, they may be doing a lot of pre-ordering on products and then they get it in and that would cause a delay i would think but i could be wrong the reason i'm saying this might be a pre-order is because they're showing electric quilt 8 and that's been out for several years uh now as a pre-order okay that would take some more discovery which i'm not going to take the time to do right now okay let's click on about us before we get into doing some shopping and uh, they are located near brockville ontario now i read that it was prescott so same difference i guess um talks here about their background and all that kind of thing uh, pictures okay Right. All right. Well, that gives you a feel for them. And they sound like they're a mom and pops kind of store. And yeah, I think it's, it's all online. Um, let's just go to their contact us and see what they have for an address. Yeah. PO box. So they are not an actual, oh wait, well, no, not necessarily. Nope. They have business hours. Okay, I'm wrong. They do have a store. Okay, that's fine. All right, let's go and do some shopping. Let's take a look at what their fabric prices are, what they have to offer. So right off the bat, we have Christmas fabrics and kits are on sale right now. They had a Boxing Week sale, that's over with. And fabric, Technique sampler quilt block, pre-cuts, notions, okay, all the usual stuff, patterns, batting, interface. Okay, what are these little things down here? Oh, they have soap as well. Okay. Puzzles. Uh by Annie Bags. Okay. I'm assuming that's the the patterns. Gift certificates, greeting cards. Okay. You know, you can make your own greeting cards from your quilts. If you ever think about doing that, just scan in picture of your quilt into your computer and away you go um okay so let's go back up here to fabrics and here we are now over on the left hand side of the screen they have i like this i like it when uh this particular template that a lot of quilt stores online seem to be using have this um, the reason I like this is it because it breaks down all their fabrics. So if you're looking for something in particular, like batik collections, um, it's easy to click on that and find it. And it tells you how many uh, items they have in that category as well, which I also like. Um, but let's jump, let's go to batiks and let's see what their price is on batiks because batiks do tend to be a little bit more expensive and they have a quick index at the top and then the sub index below so i'm just looking at what they have to offer and the price seems to be 1677 1477 um yeah so let's see 1677 this is in canadian dollars and i am assuming that that is a meter I would hope that's a meter. Um, 
Let's just click on here and see what they say about that. A yard. They sell it by the yard. Again, another one of these companies that are set up uh, not in our Canadian system, which does still bother me. Said it many, many, many times, so I'm not going into it again. However, $16.77 a yard, not a terrible price. That's actually a pretty good price. So that's fine. Um, and then they had uh, other ones. Let's let's go back. Back to shop. And back to fabric. And those are batiks that I looked at. But let's just take a, a look at the um, okay, designer fa fabrics, they call it, and see what their prices are on these. Because I know batiks tend to be a little bit more expensive in many cases. Okay. Um, I don't want to pick like somebody like Tula Pink because she tends to be a little bit more pricey. But, oh, what the hell, let's do it. And see what we're, they're charging for Tula Pink. Seventeen seventy-seven. Whoa! Oh, that's wide back. Thirty-one seventy-seven. Um, average price for wide back. Seventeen seventy-seven. So Tula Pink's a little bit more expensive. It's seventeen seventy-seven. Um, but I would suspect that that could be the case. Um, as it is a designer fabric, let's see what else do we have here. Okay, blenders and basics. Let's take a look at what their price range is for that. Now, canvas is one that I know. Uh, I bought a lot of that fabric. Twelve seventy seven. Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Twelve seventy seven for a yard. So I would say overall their prices are fair. So what else do they have under shopping? Let's check the pre cuts. Because I always like to check for those and see what their selection is. And after I just got done telling you uh, about pre-cuts and how in Canada we don't seem to have the selection that um, you can get on American sites. And these are Kona. Everybody has Kona. Yeah, Kona's fine. But if you want solids or blenders, they're great. But really, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something a little bit more unique um so let's see if there was something else here they have mini bolts three yard bundles lucky charms so this shows you cookbook that's a pre-order and that's expensive 42 fat quarter bundles of that whole line panels um well my overall impression of this my gut reaction is nothing is jumping out at me right here in these pre-cuts or in these fat quarter bundles again that may just be me well they have lots of pages of it so you know you can do a little hunt you might find something you're interested in and price wise I didn't really check the price on uh, the jelly rolls, but let's just see. $28 for 24 pieces. $38 for 101 pieces of charm. $36.58. It's all over the place. Um, prices. I guess they're okay. Um, again, this is something It's not... It's not really saying to me, come here to get pre-cuts because I can just go to my local quilt store and they've got pretty much the same selection and the prices there are pretty good. So I'm not going to go out of my way to have something shipped based on what I'm seeing here from this particular 
uh, online store. Okay, and then I'm sure that they have the usual notions and things like that. Um, just go back up in here. Notions are notions, you know, really. Um, rulers, scissors, there's not a great deal of difference. And patterns and books too. Well, we'll check that in a second. I'm just going here with notions, but or a fill or a fill thread. Okay. Rulers, cutting mats, yeah, zippers, clips. Yeah, the usual stuff. I'm just curious as to what they what their price is of Orafil because this is a thread that I use a lot. And they have collections. But let's just go to your basic Orafil. They have the large cones. I don't buy the large cones. Uh, 50 weight cotton, that's one that I do buy a lot. Fifteen fifty, okay. I pay fourteen ninety nine. I think so. It's in the ballpark. All right, let's one more thing to take a look at under shopping. I just want to see what they have in selection for patterns. Well, I should check out though. Well, we'll check out patterns first. But I do want to check out their buy any products because I do love buy any bags. Magazines, patterns, books, patterns. Bag patterns, English piecing paper, quick projects, quilt patterns. Well, let's go to quilt patterns. Okay. Now, I've not seen this on uh, any other website I've reviewed so far. Uh, this comes directly from the quilt show, Ricky Tim's, um, $129.95. So what are you getting in that? Your inspired bundle. So it looks like you're getting the threads. I guess you get the fabrics and the books. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you do get the fabrics. It looks like you get the thread because it's by Orafil. Uh, the gift bundle, right smile. Okay, it's known worldwide. Lizzie Albright, that's his book. The pattern includes 42 block patterns instructions. Quilting designs and photo of quilt mix. You get the thread. You get this CD. Okay, the gorgeous bundle includes the novel Lizzie Albright in the Attic Window, Granny's 1930 Sampler Pattern Book, Lizzie Albright Thread Collection, a CD, Christmas in Small Town, complimentary gift bag. Well, you don't get the fabric. Well, really? I'm going to pay that for four spools, for four spools of thread and a, a CD, which I'm not interested in. And I'm not interested in the novel either. So, I don't know. Maybe if somebody's, <coughs> excuse me, choking up on this. I suppose if you've got a friend who might be interested in Ricky Tim's and his book, then you might, this might be a nice gift. And the other patterns here, am I seeing anything that's really grabbing me that I haven't seen before? Not really. Nope. Nope. So again, not really worth my effort to place an order with this company because there's nothing here that really stands out for me but that's me i always say that's me this is all just from my point of view um you're really i'm sharing with you my thought process when i look at online stores okay let's get out of their products let's see what they have for classes do they have in-store classes learning opportunities for 2021 and they don't have any and that of course is probably because of COVID. uh they have a long arm rentals okay Events. What do they have in events? Uh, nothing. Okay. They have a newsletter. So there's their newsletters. And can you click on them? Yeah, it looks like you can read them online. So that's fine. Have a blog, FAQ, contact us. 
Okay, what I really want to know is what is shipping going to cost me if I don't have over $150 worth? Uh, maybe this is in their FAQ. Well, it's, yes, it is. How much does shipping cost? All domestic orders receive free shipping with a minimum pur purchase of $150 before applicable taxes. So domestic orders, meaning I would assume Canada. Um, if you don't, if you're in Western Canada, it's $15.99. Applicable print provincial sales tax will be charged for the cost of the shipping. So you have tax on top of that. Uh, Ontario and Quebec, $11.99. Canada East $17.99 and the northern part of Canada $25.99. Okay. $11.99 for me, because I'm in Ontario, and so are they. That doesn't seem out of the way. Uh and they do ship to the United States, and the cost is $21.99 Canadian. Well, I don't think that's too bad at all, given too that it'll be actually less in American dollars. Um they pick the most suitable way. You can have in-store pickup if you're in the area. Ship by Canada Post expedite tracking service. So that does have this uh, tracking service. So it says fees may apply. Hmm, not sure about that. Okay. So, yeah, I don't think your shipping is out of the way. So overall, my um, impression of this is, well, favorable. I think they are another possibility. They have a, not a bad selection of fabrics. The prices on their fabrics are pretty good. Nothing was really standing out to me, though, that mean, uh, for me to order from a place that's about three hours away from me. But, you know, there might be something there for you. Now, if I was ever in that area, I would definitely drop into their store to take a look. So that's Water Girl Quilt Company. So that brings me to the end of this episode of The Idiot Quilter. But just a final thought here. I need something from you. I need your creations, pictures of your creations, and a little blurb about them that I can feature here on The Idiot Quilter. Now, I have enough right now up until about uh, next week's, I believe, next week's um, production. So please... Send me, whether it's a garment, whether it's a quilt, a bag, whatever. It can be a piece of art, whatever. If it's something you have made and you're very proud of, then send me a picture or two. Notice the emphasis here is on a picture or two. I've had a few people, and as much as I've enjoyed looking at your pictures, I've had some people send me like six of one project. Um, and to be honest with you, I can't handle that many on here. Uh, so two, one or two are great and just a very short blurb about it. Like, when did you create it? Where did you find the pattern? Why did you create it? Did you give it as a gift? That kind of thing. But I don't need an essay. I just need two, three, four sentences at the most really about it. And I'll feature it here. I also, as you always hear me begging, I want to interview you. So come on, let's do that. Let's do it. Okay. All right. So that's it for this episode of the Idiot Quilter. I hope you have a really good week. I hope you're being safe uh, as we fight our way through this pandemic time. And I hope you're being creative as well, making good use of this time that we have in semi-isolation or whatever. Because um, it really does, at least for me, I find when I'm working on a sewing project, the world goes away. And I'm happy. And I hope you are too. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.